All right, hello everybody. Um, as you can see here, we've got a little bit. Uh, let me see. I can't hear the music here. All right, as you can see, um, Murphy won't shut up, and this is partly for him. So, congratulations, you made a cameo, you doofus. Anyway, um, I had a couple of requests from people to give a quick. Except it's not going to be very quick. Uh, tutorial game, basically, of Europa Universalis 3 Divine Wind. Um, so I'm going to do what I can. Um, I'm going to play as much of the game as possible for the first few videos, uh, first few sessions, I should say. There won't be a lot of editing of it. Um, you're going to see pretty much the whole thing. Shut up, Murphy. Um, and uh, later on, I'll start editing it because there will be a lot of sitting around doing not a whole lot. But in the early game, there's going to be a lot of combat. Um, we're going to start off with, you'd know if you read, watch my videos more, Murph, uh, you, <laughs> you're going to see, we're going to start off with Castile, because Castile is a good starter nation, um, and so it'll give people, and also they're a kingdom, so you'll get to see a little bit of, uh, what you'll be doing with claims to the throne, things of that nature. Uh, they're fairly powerful, they're very, very wealthy, um, they're going to be in a lot of wars, because they're going to have a lot of land battles in North Africa. Uh, and also, they will be doing some colonizing. So they're both a good balance of land and sea. We're going to do the Grand Campaign. And starting as Castile. Options. Uh, I have pretty much everything on normal. For some reason, I don't that. Except for Lucky Nations. I always turn that off. I hate Lucky Nations. Uh, it gives some of the AI people a little bit of an advantage, and I don't like it. Um, this first game, there is going to be a lot of me just sitting around and babbling. Um, I will not go overboard in it, uh, at least I'll try not to, but there is a lot of information in the interface and you need to know what you're looking at in order to be playing. I will tell you there may be better um, LPs out there for learning how to play the game than I'll be able to do because there's way better players out there than I am. Uh, one individual that I recommend is Paradoxian. He is fantastic um, and he's also got some LP videos of various games from Paradox. Um, anyway, if you're playing a game as Castile, this is always going to be your first mission. Uh, your first mission is to kick Granada off of the uh, mainland. So the first thing that we're going to do is declare war on Granada. And we're going to use the Conquest Casus Belli as compared to the Reconquista. And the, the reason for that... Actually, we might do... Holy War. We'll do Holy War because it'll give a better prestige bonus. Um, basically, every Casus Belli that you have gives you a, a different breakdown in how infamy and whatnot will break will happen. Um, with the Reconquest, we would end up by annexing them with four infamy uh, for taking Granada, for the, taking Gibraltar, and then these two will be free because you get zero infamy for Almeria and Granada. With the Holy War, we'll get one quarter normal infamy, so it'll cost us three, which is less infamy than if we just annex them all that way. Um, plus, we'll get a bonus to prestige and normal cost for everything. Uh, with conquest, it's the same level of infamy, normal prestige. So we're going to go with the Holy War. And now let's uh, give a quick breakdown of the interface. Um, first of all, there's many, many, many map modes here that are available. There's mainly uh, three or four that I would be, I ever make use of. Um, the primary one that I will use is the political one, and that breaks it down so you can see all the different countries based on color. Uh, another valuable one is the religious map mode, which uh, will give you the different religions that people are. Yellow is Catholic. Uh, green is Muslim. Uh, and orange, this orangey-brown color is Orthodox, and this color here is uh, animist or paganist. Um, later on, ref reformed will be a light blue and Protestant will be a dark blue. Uh, if you have a color where the base color is orange or yellow or green, and then the slash color is the other one, it's basically the slash color is the col the religion of the country and the province is the color that is the base. So as you can see, Ruthenia here in Poland, the, ba the province is Orthodox, uh, but Poland is Catholic, which will give Poland some disadvantages in there. For instance, they get a revolt risk boost uh, based on their tolerance of heathens. Uh, and on top of that, they have 
um, penalties to their research and to their stability costs. Um, that's going to be a concern for us here in Castile, because once we conquer Granada, um, we're going to have a split due to the Muslims in Granada. Let's see, let's move these units here to get them together so we can merge these armies. Do we have a military leader? No, we do not. Um, now for the other one that we might be interested in is the Imperial map mode. With the Imperial map mode, you get a breakdown of what nations are in the Imperial, uh, the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, basically, this matters if you're not in the Empire, because if you are not in the Empire and you attack an Empire nation, the Holy Roman Emperor will attack you. Uh, he will be called to their defense, and he will generally defend them. Um, dark green, like this, is member states. Light green in this phase, the moderate green, is the electors, and the bright green is the current emperor. Bohemia in 1399 will always start as emperor, and usually Austria or Burgundy will take it from them. Um, from there, the other ones that you might be interested in having uh, are trade map mode. This will give a breakdown of the different uh, centers of trade, where they're going, and who is in the trade leagues. Uh, diplomatic map mode gives a showing of all of your friendships, allies, and wars. As you can see, it's red with Granada because I'm at war with Granada. Uh, and if you have a core, uh, you'll have slashes on it like so. If you own a province that you do not have a core, it will have gray slashes on it. Uh, this is the region map mode. This is useful for certain missions. Um, once you're in the region map mode and you mouse over it, as you can see in the bottom right corner, uh, it shows you what areas they are part of the regions of. Uh, the culture map mode gives you a breakdown of the various cultures because it does impact, again, your technologies and your stability costs. And then the sphere of influence map mode, uh, which gives you where, uh, if it's gray, they cannot be within your sphere of influence for whatever reason. If it's this tan color, uh, you can add them to your sphere of influence like we're going to do here. And if it's light green, dark green is yours, light green is states within your sphere of influence. It costs prestige to add them to your sphere of influence, and somebody that has more prestige can uh, steal some your sphere of influence from you. Your sphere of influence impacts how many magistrates you have. I hope all of that made sense. And now, um, we're going to break down some of the other important numbers on the page here. Right here is your manpower. Um, your current manpower is listed there. If you mouse over it, it will show what your maximum manpower is and how much you'll gain every month, uh, as well as how much you need to reinforce all of your armies. Next to that is stability. Um, it ranges from minus three to plus three. The higher stability is, the better off your empire is as a whole. The lower your stability is, the worse off your empire is as a whole. You can see the different things that it uh, affects right here with this mouse over. Um, then is the amount of money that you have, obviously, in ducats. It gives you, when you mouse over it, it gives you your total ducats, how much you gain, spend or gain per month, how much you get at the end of each year, and the net gain or loss from it. Um, the way that you will operate most of the time is by trying to make sure that your total economy at the end of the year will cover all of your costs throughout the year. Uh, you want to try to avoid minting as, if you can, but if you have to mint, go for it. Because you're better off getting... Um, having mint, having inflation that you have to then work down than you are having interest payments from loans because the interest payments from loans are far more oppressive um, and on top of that they affect you more strongly next thing in line is the prestige that your empire has this is kind of like a score um, the higher your prestige the various advantages that you get plus there are numerous things that you spend prestige in order to get for instance the uh, um, sphere of influence and Prestige also affects royal marriages, personal unions, things of that nature. It's very good to have. Next is infamy, also known as bad boy. Um, the higher your infamy is, the less people will like you. It will affect your standings with other nations. Um, given your infamy change that's based on your ruler and various other assorted factors, you want to try to keep it as close to zero as possible. The numbers at the top, zero is your, my current, 35 is my maximum. If I cross the threshold of the maximum, bad things will happen within the empire. Try your best not to avoid being having to do that. Um, and then next is your, your, is your legitimacy. Legitimacy is long-term important um, because your legitimacy affects 
a great number of things, including your revolt risk, infinity limits, and so on. Ooh, giving myself lightheaded here from talking so much. Now, next you go into the available people that you can get. Uh, you have merchants, which their purpose is pretty obvious. Um, yes, they are. The your your colonists, which you use to obviously colonize, uh, and each one that you break mouse over will give you a breakdown of how many you get per year. Diplomats, which you use to do everything contacting other nations. Uh, missionaries, which you will use to, of course, convert provinces. Spies, which you can do many, many, many nefarious things with. And magistrates, which do a great deal of purposes. Um, what I will tell you is right now, when it comes to magistrates, uh, in the beginning of the game, I always like to save all of my magistrates. Uh, and the reason for that is that there is a provincial decision that you can get called Expand the Bureaucracy right off the bat that increases the amount of magistrates you can get at a tax penalty. I consider it valuable because you will find in the long term that magistrates are far more valuable than gold. And so you want to hang on to those as much as possible. In this section here, uh, there are a number of flags that will drop down based that are dependent on what's going on. Uh, this first one is we can change a slider. You can change these every 10 to 20 years, depending on how large your nation is and what kind of government you have. Um, and they are your government policies, and they will have long-term effects, and you can only nudge them a little bit once in a while. So you want to have a plan right off the beginning and just constantly nudge towards that plan. This one means that you have room in your court for um, another advisor. You can have up to three of them, um, and you want to use them wisely. Crunch the numbers, because you do not want, for instance, a tax guy that's going to cost you more than he's giving you. Uh, that would be stupid. Don't do it. Uh, next is all of the places with disputed secessions. Um, this has many uses. Uh, where you really are going to use it most is making claims on people's thrones. Um, for instance, later on, I'm going to want Aragon to have a disputed secession so that I can make a claim on their throne and force a personal union so I can inherit Aragon and become Spain. That's going to be a long-term goal of Castile. The other way to do it is to conquer Aragon piece by piece and then gain cores over time. Takes a lot longer. Would rather not do it that way if I can avoid it. Uh, and I'll explain that as we get to it. And of course, this one means that you're at war. Currently, we're at war with Granada. As soon as we unpause it, we will also be at war with Morocco, and that will be a pain in the ass. Speaking of which... Um, now we're going to go to this shield. This is where you handle most all of your policies. Give me a moment. I need to catch my breath. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to try not to keep making myself hyperventilate. Um, this first screen here, uh, what you show is your basic breakdown of your nation. It's basically the same thing that you get by clicking on any other nation. Uh, it gives you what your kingdom is, what your primary culture is, who your king is, um, your total prestige, where that ranks you amongst other nations, your reputation, any modifiers you have listed here, what your religion is, uh, all of your current diplomatic statuses, and your current relations. If you have the ability to create vassals, you can click on this when you're not at war, and it'll bring up a screen where you can expel vassals. Uh, the reason that you would want to do that is if your infamy is far too high, you can release some vassals and it will crank your infamy down a little bit. This screen here is your imperial screen. It gives you your king and their stats here. All their stats affect certain things. I'll pause momentarily over them so that you can pause the video and see what the different stats do. If you have an heir, it will be listed here. And then, of course, your great men of the court. So let's take a look at what we have available for great men. Uh, nothing really exceptional here. Possibly that Master of the Mint. Let's see, 5% of that isn't worth the amount of money it will cost. Are we getting inflation from gold? Is there gold in these provinces? 
No. We do have gold here somewhere, don't we? Yeah, Toledo makes gold. Not enough to cause inflation. That's good. Um... Not very useful. We'll take this guy with a diplomatic skill. That'll be useful. Uh, yes, there is a problem that sometimes you end up ping-ponging. Um, you'll get better at, over time, you'll get better at protect at stopping that from happening. This government tech investment guy is valuable. And I think I will take this master of the, whoop, not him. This master of the mint, he can be valuable. Okay, this screen here is your technology sliders. As you can see, um, it breaks down all your incomes. Total income here. Investments is everything that you've got in these sliders. Um, advisor salaries, how much you're paying all your advisors every month, how much you're paying colonial maintenance every month, military maintenance, missionary maintenance, and interest on loans. Uh, if you have those running, they will be listed here. As you can see, income is less than expenses. How much tribute you're being paid, uh, how much you're receiving in war subsidies, or paying out them. They'll be negative if you're paying. Uh, what your end of month balance is. This is a monthly balance right here, and any inflation that you currently have. Um, these are the different tech groups that you can re put research into. If you mouse over them, it will show what is coming available. This is going to be the first one that we're going to want to get, but for right now, we want to raise our stability. And then you can right-click on these to lock them so that they don't change over time. This screen here is your military screen. It will show you all your boats and all your west your melee units, which you can change here and here for your cavalry. You have infantry and cavalry. Uh, cavalry is primarily going to be there for shock, uh, basically to break the morale of the enemy troops. So you want a lot less cavalry than you have infantry, plus you get a multiplier if you have the proper balance, which is this has to be less than half of your total army. Uh, if you are Poland, you get a special treat because of the Hussars, and that breaks down that you can have 60% cavalry to infantry, which gives you a big advantage in the early game. And then, of course, how many you have, your current war exhaustion, how much it's modified by each month, and this is your maximum. That you, The lower this is, the maximum is, the better, because this translates directly into war war weariness, which translates directly into revolt risk. Uh, then when you look down here, you have land units, naval units, what their morale is, how many you have total, what your support limits are. If you have less than your support limit, uh, you'll have normal pricing. If you go over your support limit, there's a multiplier on your maintenance, how much your maintenance is, and then sliders to adjust what your current maintenance is. This is the religion screen. It gives a breakdown of your tolerances of the true faith is the, the top happy one. Um, heretics, heretical beliefs are listed here, which are other, for instance, um, other Christians, Orthodox, Protestants, and Reformed to Catholics are heretics. Um, for Muslims, if you're Shiite, then Sunnis and so on would be heretics. And then, of course, heathens, which is everyone that is not Christian, if you're a Christian or Muslim if you're a Muslim, or um, so on. If there are any rebel faction, these are decisions that you can make. We'll start with this. Um, they will have a green check if you can get them. If you mouse over here, it'll give you a black a background of what it is. Background? Uh, was that racist? Uh, if you hover over the question mark, it'll show you what triggers you need in order to get it. Uh, and then, of course, if you hover over the envelope, it'll tell you what it will get. This one I will get right now because I'm going to want that very much. And I won't always have a guy with a high enough administration in order to be able to do it. Uh, some of these I am going to want to get later because I'm going to be doing a lot of conversion. Right here, if you have the money for it and you have enough prestige, you can claim the Defender of the Faith, which gives you the advantages that you see here. Um, likely as Castile, since we're going to be pretty narrow-minded and, you know, because no, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Um, although, you should. 
we're probably going to end up as the defender of the faith at some point. Um, if you have rebels in your territory and they've taken over a province, you can, they will have a line here and you can um, bargain with them to make them go away. This screen is your governmental breakdown. Uh, this is where you would go to change your government. We don't want to be a despotic monarchy. We like being a feudal monarchy. Um, if you have ideas, they will be listed here. You'll be able to change them here. Uh, if you haven't gotten one yet, it costs you nothing to change to add one. If you do have one and you want to change it, it will cost you three stability. Bear that in mind, but it often can be worth it. Like, for instance, we are going to very early on switch what I'm going to get for the first one over to Quest for the New World. Uh, and the reason for that is because I want to get a jump start on colonizing the New World over everybody else. Um, these are your domestic policy sliders. Uh, they break from oppositional forces on either side. They go from negative five to positive five, with zero being neutral and giving no bonus. Uh, we are where these red marks are. They are your current limitations due to your governmental form. If you cross these, every step you cross it gives you plus one revolt risk in every province. So you can do it. Not always recommended. Um, you'll see, though, that when I become an administrative monarchy, which will be the next one that I'll do far later in the game, uh, that will move this notch over to here. And so I will actually go to the full length because it'll only be plus two and centralization is fantastic. Um, right now it's at the notch, so we're going to leave it there. Uh, aristocracy, plutocracy. Aristocracy gives you better and cheaper troops. Plutocracy gives you better and cheaper traders. Um serfdom to free subjects serfdom reduces army morale reduces cost of troops and makes tech more expensive free subjects is the direction we're going to want to go uh in our in the game that we're going because we're going to want to counteract the technology penalty for narrow-minded by having free subjects um narrow-minded gives you less stability costs um more missionaries cheaper missionaries etc and your colonies grow faster and so on Mercantilism, free trade. We're going to move towards free trade as time goes forward. Not right now, though. Um, free trade makes you be able to tr have better compete chances outside of your empire. Mercantilism has better compete chances within your empire. Uh, more on that later. All right, those observant among you will notice that the music just suddenly abruptly changed. Okay. Um, offensive and defensive. Um, Offensive armies are have higher morale and better shock. They're basically better at straight combat. Defensive armies are better at sieging. Um, land and naval should be pretty obvious. Uh, quality versus quantity. Uh, quality troops are more disciplined, have higher fire, uh, but it reduces your mass maximum manpower. Quality does exactly the opposite. It's that easy. So what we're going to start with um, is we're actually going to shift towards quality we lose a stability for it uh, as you can see everyone there's a one third of a chance that you're going to have any of those different events um, there's usually two bad one good and with centralization decentralization centralization all three are bad and decentralization all three are good but it's rare that you'll ever want to decentralize there are strategies built around it I would never do it this screen here is your military screen. It gives you your current discipline, army tradition, navy tradition, if you have any, and this is where you would recruit generals and so on. This is your cultural screen. There are cultural decisions down here that you would spend magistrates for generally, not always, but usually. Uh, and here you can recruit great men. Um, we will do that later, but not until we have higher cultural tradition. This screen gives you all of your national decisions as well as your current mission. If you hover over the question mark, it will show you what you need to have. Um, if you, and of course it'll show you what you'll get. Um, basically, this is really easy. What we have to do is conquer Granada. And then there are all these ideas down here. One of our goals is this right here. As you can see, uh, we have the vast majority of these, say for Barcelona, Barcelona Aragon and Valencia, and we need cores on all of them. So we will want to inherit Aragon at some point. Um, and again, the way that we're going to do that is going to be a little crafty, and you'll see that later. 
All right, so let's unpause it uh, and begin things. Morocco has, of course, joined the war. Which is, you know, expected. In fact, hold on a second, I should be recruiting troops. Uh, when you click on a province, all the buildings in the province are here. Um, this red line, you can only have one of these sections in any one province. So, like, you can build a college if you want, but then you can't build any of those. I haven't figured out the unique buildings because I actually haven't played that far very often. Uh, manufactories are very expensive, but give you a lot of bonuses. More on that way later. Um, this will give you the name of the province. Uh, this is actually the capital city of that province. Population. The growth of the population, how many troops can stand in here without attrition, what the maximum attrition is for your troops in this province, the current revolt risk, uh, what the uh, primary culture is, um, how much manpower it is giving you to your nation, uh, the cost for stability that it grants to the nation, what size fort it is, how many people are in it, uh, your money breakdown, and your production breakdown, what religion and whether or not you can colonize it, and here is a list of the cores. As you can see, Galicia... Uh, has a core on Galicia, uh, so somebody can force that to come out. In here, you'll be able to get provincial decisions, which we aren't going to mess with right now. And this is where you can recruit regiments, which we are going to mess with right now. Note, every time we recruit one, it takes a thousand units out of the manpower. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then one, two, three. Oops, let's kill that last one. We don't want to go broke here. In fact, let's not recruit the knights right now. Just the infantry, um, in order to save as much manpower as possible and also money. Eldris is now involved. That's annoying. An alliance offer for Milan, which I don't want to take because they're probably... Well, what's cost, uh, Austria's mission? Securing the Imperial border. No, I don't want to make an agreement with them because they are going to end up at war with um, Austria, and that's just a fucked up battle I do not want to be involved in. Um, also, when you're looking at these, this lets you hire mercenaries. Mercenaries are a lot more expensive both in base cost and in maintenance, um, but you they do not take from your manpower pool, and in fact, when they replenish, they don't take from your manpower pool, so they can be worth it in the long term, especially if you're a wealthy nation. And this, of course, lets you build boats. Okay, merge these troops. You guys are going to stop Moroccan Arm Navy from getting out. They're going to make a stand at Lamanca. Hungry, you're nowhere near me. It's not worth making peace with you. Oh. Now let me give a breakdown of the combat screen. Oh god, that's loud. Let me just turn that down real quick. Okay. Much better. Um, what you see here is, of course, the attacker on top, defender on the bottom. Uh, the, we're, we're the attacker because we marched into the province. They're defending because they were already there. Um, and then you see a breakdown for both so both of them, cavalry, infantry, uh, artillery, neither of us have artillery yet because we don't have the technology for it. Uh, this bar is the morale. The most common way that you will win a fight is that somebody's morale will break um, or lose a fight, and then they'll run away. And then once they run away, you want to try to meet, beat them to the province before the month ends, basically in order to wipe the unit entirely. There are two phases of combat, and they alternate, fire and shock. Currently, we have no values in the fire phase, so not much is going to happen there unless somebody massively beats the other person's roll. Um, the shock phase is where the most morale damage will always be done. Fire phase will do more, far more um, unit damage. 
Uh, if you have a commander, they'll be listed here as theirs is. You can mouse over them and see what their stats are. They're going to get um, bonuses on a couple of things, but let's break it down. Now, every phase, you'll have... Mm, basically, there are three places that your score comes from. Uh, you have your die roll, which is a random number generated from 0 to 9. You have any... Uh, then it is added to your general shock rating, if you have one. And it is... The, basically the highest shock value of one general minus the highest shock value of another general. So if I had shock four general and they had a shock two general, then I would only get two shock points added on. They would get none. And then this it subtracts any terrain modifiers. We crossed a river, so we get a minus one. Um, and then here you see the breakdown of how the military is laid out. As you can see, cavalry flanks um, and troops line up in the middle. And they will jostle around as necessary based on the skill of your tactics of your your commander. And, you know, and each phase takes about four days. Okay, and we won that fight. Pause it real quick. They're going to make it back to safety before the month after the month ends. So, and they're going into a province that they have people, but we're going to chase them anyway. All of these troops finished. Let us march them down here to Toledo. We'll follow this army. So I'm going to turn that back up a little bit. Not you. All right, that's better. Okay, it's January, so we just got our cash injection up here. Not overly concerned about it right now. Am I currently allied with anyone? Nope. Cool enough. What do you have a mission? Castian relations. Okay, I wiped their unit. So now, I'm going to head that army off. Hopefully I'll catch them. If not, I'll just have to run back here. Now what we're going to do... um. This army is going to remain on the offensive, trying to take out their units. Um, the reason for that is because it has cavalry in it. Since these guys are all infantry, they're going to siege the provinces. That's that's my goal. Um, that should make this battle go a little bit better. You're not going to catch them, so just stay there. Actually, let's be crafty. See if I can draw their navy out. As you can see, morale and troop numbers replenish at the end of every month. Merge all of these together. Still one missing. As you can see here, we have a terrain penalty because uh, this particular terrain is very hilly. Right here. 64% hills gives a big terrain penalty. They're running to Elmeria, so we'll follow them over there. This unit is now ready. Whoops. Wrong button. Merge them. March towards Granada. End up fighting them again. This time we have a minus five terrain penalty. Um, okay. Here we have a random event. Local fortification expert discovered. Seems as if there's a great man in one of our provinces who has rather intriguing ideas on how to create better fortifications. However, he's reluctant to leave his own town. I don't need a military engineer. What I would rather have is this, which will give this province here um, a 50% defensive bonus until the end of the game. So I would love for that to happen. Alright. Wipe that unit. You go stand there. You guys detach a siege. And march to Gibraltar. You march over here to Cadiz. Oh, you know what? I should really uh, set up my traders. I'm going to do this the easy way. Um, here we have the ledger. This gives a breakdown of all the trade hubs we can find. We can see the thread. That means they're 